lesson one, safety. Learn to blow glass is not responsible for injury due to misuse of information. Always read instructions that come with equipment or tools. Always wear proper eye protection. Always work in a well-ventilated, fireproof area. It is best to consult a professional when using equipment for the first time. Join us on a unique journey as we explore the artistry and profound impact of this underground art form. Borosilicate lampworking combines precision, skill, and imagination. The process begins when artisans shape molten rods and tubes into intricate designs, breathtaking sculptures, and functional art pieces. In 1971, Bob Snodgrass began his career as a glassblower. Snodgrass discovered the process of silver and gold fuming, which involves vaporizing these precious metals and fusing them into the glass. Snodgrass unlocked a new world of color and depth, captivating artists and collectors alike. His groundbreaking approach forever altered the course of borosilicate lampworking, turning it into a true art form. In 1990, he moved to Eugene, Oregon, where he quickly gained local fame and inspired revolutionary numbers of future glassblowers. However, the world of lampworking has not been without its challenges. In 2002, the industry faced a severe setback when it was targeted by John Ashcroft and two federal operations known as Pipe Dreams and Headhunters. These operations sought to crack down on the production and distribution of glass pipes and bonds. Operation Pipe Dreams and Headhunters both had a profound impact on the lampworking community. But out of this adversity emerged a rallying cry for artistic freedom and the right to self-expression. Martyrs Tommy Chong from Chong Glass and Jason Harris from Jerome Baker Designs were only two of the many artists and business owners who were arrested as a result of these federal stings. The artists in this industry have overcome many obstacles and continue to push the boundaries of borosilicate lampworking, transforming it into a globally recognized art form celebrated today for its innovation and beauty. Hi, I'm Sammy. I don't blow glass, but I've been around it my entire life. Welcome to an exciting new TV series that offers viewers a unique look into the world of contemporary glass art and the artists who push the boundaries of what's possible. In this series, we'll take you behind the scenes and into the studio as we explore the visually captivating underground world of glass art. In each episode, we challenge glass artists to create large-scale mixed-media art pieces. These artists work in five-person teams, pushing their creativity and skill level to the absolute limit. The results are assured to amaze and inspire. My name is Jonathan Kilman. This is Learn to Blow Glass, brought to you by Team Headhunter. With the advent of the internet, the illegal drug paraphernalia industry has exploded in its expansion. The drug paraphernalia business now thrives not only in small shops, but it is now accessible in anyone's home that has a computer and internet access. And in homes across America, we know that children and young adults are the fastest growing population of internet users. Today, the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, under the leadership of Deputy Attorney General Larry Thompson and Associate Deputy Attorney General Karen Tandy. Today, that Organized Crime and Drug Enforcement Task Force has taken three decisive steps to dismantle the illegal drug paraphernalia industry by attacking their physical, financial, and internet structures. Although Operation Pipe Dreams and Headhunters cost taxpayers over $12 million and employed hundreds of federal agents, it was less than effective. So tell me a little about yourself. My name's Tara Hardy. My art name is T Dog Hardy. I am Andrew Jacobs. My name's Jason Charles. My name is Joseph Breer. My name is Alejandro Hernandez. I go by Young Poppy Chulo on Instagram. Where are you from and how long have you been in Glass? So originally I'm from Illinois. 
Um, I've been blowing glass right around 20 years. I'm originally from Northern California. I spent a lot of time up in Seattle. Blown glass for about 10 years, been back on the torch since August after a break of about five years. I'm from here in the Willamette Valley area, Eugene, Oregon, and I've been blowing glass for about 13 or 14 years. Uh, I'm from Grants Pass, Oregon. I've been blowing glass for about five years now. I'm from north of Seattle up in Bellingham, Washington. I have been blowing glass since about 2015, 16. So what style do you practice in your day to day? I do a lot of production work just so I can pay the bills. I like doing uh, non-type stuff as well. I've made pumpkins and mushrooms and some pendants and stuff. Mostly I do uh, production type. It would be considered scientific. It's more of like the clean side of things, more of what people would expect to see off of the lathe. But I do it all by hand. So there's a lot of uh, technical seals, a lot of donuts and stuff like that. I've been told like, I have an interesting combination of like Pacific Northwest flavor due to where I learned in Seattle. And then also people like uh, Todd Hensley and Jonathan and RX Glass, Whitney Harmon, all these guys that are very much old heads. They've influenced my work. I like to do a lot of sculpting. I like doing fume work and I've been trying to do larger builds. I say that I specialize in recyclers, so it's basically the water comes up through the uptakes, comes back down through the funnel, through the drains in a recycling function, so it makes like a really cool tornado. I have several designs. That's my main thing that I do. I kind of um, dabble in a lot of different art forms when it comes to glass. Right now I've been doing a lot of traditional glass blowing, which is out of a furnace. It's a little bit different than what we're doing today. Typically, I work with the public. Anybody can come to me. If you're ever in Eugene, Oregon, come to Studio West. That's the business that I own. Anybody can come as young as six, and you can make like a paperweight, an ornament. And then what are you doing today? I'm making a hammer with a twisted donut. What advice do you have for any aspiring glass blower? Definitely hard work. You have to really want to do it. You have to put in long hours, practice a lot, be dedicated. That's the only way to really get better at it, just to keep doing it, put in those hours, basically. Today, I'm working on one of my four by two recyclers. It's all space decked out. I'm gonna add a bunch of opals and some dichro horns. It's gonna be a really cool piece. I'm really just looking forward to getting to collab with everybody. I'm really open to further my knowledge about the glass and be a part of a bigger build. What advice do you have for any aspiring glass blowers? It's going to be a lot of really hard days, a lot of long nights, but the number one thing is just don't give up. If you're passionate about it, then keep on driving. Today I am making a space themed ray gun and it's going to have power cells and it's going to be a natural perk or dry piece.
forgiving to a point. It forces you to think deeply about your actions and it's a great for growth. something that's cool to look at. What would you yeah. say your favorite thing about people Definitely the freedom, you yeah. know, like you can do whatever you want. I set my own schedule. I do work a lot more than if I worked a regular job, but also, you know, I have a lot of free time as well. Yeah. And oh, absolutely, it's, I, I don't, you kind of get spoiled doing it, and I just don't know that I could ever go get a regular job. Like, I've never really had a regular job. I couldn't ever do it. Do you have any expectations? Yeah. You know, obviously exposure is a big part. I want to kind of get seen. It's kind of tough staying current in the art scene. You just kind of always got to be keeping up with the culture and making the things that are popular kind of thing. So, you know, that is one motivation of mine, but also I just like having fun and I feel like I thrive in an environment where there's other people working. That just pumps me up and makes me want to do it even more. So I feel good being in the mix right now, you know, like, that's, that's cool. What advice do you have for any aspiring black folks? Don't do it for the money. You know, in the beginning, it used to be real lucrative and fun, but now I would say if you want to get into it, just, you know, put your heart into it. It takes a lot of work and dedication. And if you're going to really want to dive into it, just put everything that you have into it. Give it the dedication that you need to learn Good I'm doing an exosphere. It's kind of a combination of my fab eggs that I usually do and a ball ring. So it will be round, but it will also have donuts in it. What do you love most about that? It's the challenge. I think that uh, I think that everything else kind of has a roadmap and everything else has an instruction manual, but glass never did for me. So I kind of don't have anyone telling me what I should be doing and I can figure it out on my own. It's kind of been me my whole life. What advice do you have for any aspiring glass bowl? Start slow. The old adage that I always think of is that a ninja who practices one single kick 10,000 times is much more skilled than a ninja that practices 10,000 kicks one time. So start slow, do one thing over and over again before you make it look good. What are you trying to get out of this experience? I want to see something new. I want to be impressed by somebody's idea of using glass in a different way. I feel like they're, everybody says they glass, everything has already been made. So I kind of want to be proven wrong. Lesson two, tools and equipment. First, you will need a set of T-grade lines. T-grade lines will not deteriorate due to use with propane. Second on the list, oxygen and gas regulators. 
flashback arresters go between your lines and your tanks, you're definitely going to need a torch. Propane and oxygen tanks, you can find these at your local welding supply store. Eye protection. This will help to cut down the solar flare from your torch. You can never have enough tools. You'll need some good graphite, bull push, marble molds, paddles, reamers. You'll need tweezers and grabbers and mashers, a kiln for garaging and annealing, proper ventilation. Every shop should have at least one good fire extinguisher. You might need some burn gel. And a first aid kit always comes in handy. Be sure to get the cloth band-aids. Just about everything on this list can be found at mountainglassarts.com. I am from the Pacific Northwest. I have been blowing glass 30 years. My favorite thing about glass is I learn something new every day. It's actually what inspires me. Doing the same old thing over and over again just gets dull after a while. I'll be helping with the design and mixed media aspects of this project as well as helping with the final build. My advice for aspiring glass blowers would be, you know, don't ever let anyone tell you what you can or can't do. There's always another way to skin a cat. And, you know, if you continue to think about a process or form a process or practice something, you're gonna come up with something that nobody else has done before or maybe has been done and forgotten. I think everybody should aspire to blow glass. Whether you wanna do it as a career or just a hobby or you just want to try it once, you know, take a class, a lesson or a workshop. Get familiar with the material and gain some insight and see what artists in your community are doing because I don't think that people understand what really goes into making something really nice out of glass. It's actually really tough to do. I don't have any real expectations, but it would be nice to inspire others. I'd like to see Team Headhunters grow and for the builds to get larger and more spectacular. DabX and Learn to Blow Glass have teamed up to bring you the DabX Challenge. Five winners will get a spot on the show to compete for $10,000 in cash and prizes. Create your own custom DabX top to enter. Entries must be received by November 15th, 2023. For a limited time, DabX is offering glass blowers a package valued at $600 for only $100. This package includes a DabX Go, a Rocket MK1, Dab Station, Dab Tool, and Reverse Flow Atomizer. Visit us at learntoblowglass.com to enter and receive your one-time discount. We're back here with Joseph. Thank you again for joining us. How was it creating this art piece? What exactly are you guys making? We are working on uh, building a display case that is also functional, meaning that it'll be able to be used as a water piece or a dry piece. We haven't really decided on that yet. We're coming together on a nice ocean theme. Everybody's been working super hard. There was a little bit of miscommunication in the beginning. I think that we've worked through that though, and things are definitely going a lot better today as far as getting things done. And yeah, we're just excited to go further on this build. So what were your contributions to the piece? I've done a couple of coral scenes so far. Right now I'm currently working on some crushed opal, kind of gonna be like some pearls. We're gonna do something with an octopus reaching for the pearls, I believe. It should be pretty cool. How was the overall process and your experience doing this? Overall, it's been a good time. I've enjoyed working with a lot of the artists here. Cool seeing all the different styles and techniques that everybody's got. It's been pretty cool.
How is it working with multiple different artists on one piece? It's definitely something different than I'm used to. A lot of the time, I'm mostly just a functional guy, build recyclers and stuff. Going into something sculptural with a bunch of other people and kind of having to work together on a plan versus just coming up with it myself has definitely been a challenge, but I've really enjoyed it. Well, thank you for sticking out. A lot of people didn't. It's awesome for you being part of the process. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. I, I appreciate you guys being here. We're back here with Tara Hardy. What art piece are you guys creating? We're uh, creating an ocean theme piece. What were your contributions to the art piece? I made some opal marbles and I'm making starfish sculptures. I'm sure there'll probably be a couple other things too. How was the overall process and your experience? Pretty good. I learned some new things that I probably wouldn't have done on my own. And it was just nice going out of the box of what I normally do. It was a pretty good experience. So I'm curious, how is it being the only female working on the project? Luckily for me, the guys are pretty nice. Generally, that's how it is. Uh, you know, there's not a whole ton of female glass blowers. There's more than when I first started. How was it working with multiple different artists on one singular piece? Pretty good. I'm, uh, where I was at though, I, I, I'm pretty much just following directions because, uh, I mean, you definitely need people to delegate when you have like a bunch of people working together. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully everything will turn out pretty awesome, so. I hope so too. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, thank you. We're back here with Alejandro, aka Young Papi Chulo. How was your overall experience? That's really interesting. Everyone's really, really fun and uh, optimistic and positive. So it's a nice vibe okay. working with people like that. Well, right now, I'm working on a simple image, and it's going to be the blue rings that go onto an, uh, onto an octopus. So what is the art piece you guys are actually creating? We're going with a sea life theme. We're building a reef structure that a uh, blue ringed octopus is going to sit on top of and I think everybody's been working pretty hard. What were your contributions to the piece? I built the millefiori that are now the rings on the octopus. I also made the eye millefiori. Just doing the prep work, making cane. We're getting ready to go into the body build of the octopus. So I'll probably have a pretty big part in that. It looks like Jonathan already made some of the tentacles, so we'll kind of work towards finishing that goal. How is it working with multiple different artists on one piece? It's interesting. I don't know that any one person here has really done something like this before, so. Um, it's interesting to see everybody just working on the fly and kind of getting out of their comfort zone. Um, but I think everyone's doing a great job and, uh, you know, it's nice to, nice to be able to work with other people.
Oh, I'm glad you're still here. I heard a lot of people kind of fell off. They're still I'm here, here yeah, I'm gonna do it. Let's get yeah. it done. For Love sure. it. We're back here with Andrew, a.k.a. Conjoiner. Thank you again for joining us. Absolutely. So what kind of art piece are you helping to create? So we're building a montage of like coral reefs and an octopus sculpture with some other floaty aspects. What are your contributions to the piece? I ended up making two rather large chunks of coral. One of them very thick and heavy, the other one a little spindly and full of little networking things. Today I'm making some more filler material to add sculptural flourish. What was your overall experience and how was the process? Well, I'm thankful that it hasn't been exceptionally hot. That was one thing I always worry about when I go somewhere else. So the weather's been nice. The fact that I've gotten to hang out with a bunch of people again that are each doing very unique and creative things. I got reminded I can't phone it in. So that was nice. Trying to make sure I continue to make things bigger and durable and represent myself well. It was fun. It was a good chance to do it. So I know uh, glass blowers usually work independently. How is it working with multiple different artists on one piece? It's fun because despite me liking to do a lot of different things, I'm not necessarily good at a bunch of different things. Yeah. And everyone brings something they can do to the table. So now I have that and among other stuff I want to do when I get home as a result of seeing other people do it here. Well, I'm glad you stuck it out Absolutely. and continued on with the process. Thank and you. And we're happy to have you. Absolutely. It was fun. I look forward to next time. Lesson three, materials. Silver, 999 pure, 0.999 gold, or if you want it to stick, here's a quick tip. Get the 10th ounce American Gold Eagles. They're 23 karat and it sticks really well. Clear tubing and rod. Color tubing and rod. Frit or crushed glass comes in lots of sizes and colors and has many applications. Dichroic comes in sheet, tubing, images, and luster. Opals come in all shapes and sizes, tumbled, polished, crushed, and there's many applications. Ground glass joints may or may not be necessary because they can be made by hand with the right tools and experience. All of these materials can be found at mountainglassarts.com. say that the communication was probably the biggest challenge. Uh, we ended up getting through it and we made a, a really cool piece as you guys can see. Uh, but yeah, the communication was definitely a big challenge and uh, I'm glad we were able to work through it.
I think like my biggest challenge was just like having the confidence to do it. I knew about this show before, but I just didn't think I was skilled enough. That's probably the biggest number one challenge to even doing it in the first place. My biggest challenge was keeping everyone on the same page. It takes a lot of work to communicate with multiple people at once in the heat of the moment. The biggest challenge was kind of letting go of the control of the final piece. I like to be in control of knowing where things go when I build things and, you know, stepping back and letting others do what they do best is a good thing to take in. How would you describe this piece to people today? Uh, it's it's a thing of beauty, honestly. Like it's it's hard to describe, hard to put into words. There's a lot of hours into it, uh, a lot of talent that's gone into it, years of experience to be able to bring this all together. This was a huge collaborative effort. I described this piece as a Sea Life theme infinity box display case essentially a mixed media art piece. We used over 40 square feet of glass with dichroic film on it for the infinity box. Um, the shelving as well as the panels uh, have a dichro film on them. And it's got an eight pound coral scene with a blue ringed octopus for its crown. I think it's pretty awesome. There's not a whole lot of pieces like that. I'd love to see more large nature-inspired uh, pieces. I think the natural world is like probably the best muse any artist could have. I'm just hoping that uh, it can continue to grow into a bigger show. I, I guess that I just want to see more episodes. Anything nature themed would be awesome in my opinion. Um, the big sculptures are not done a whole lot and would love to see more large nature inspired pieces that are straight up art pieces. It allows people to get out of their box and just create art. Absolutely. I'd love to see other people come in and bring in their own specialties, their own cool techniques and things they have to the table. Definitely, I would love to. I, I would love to do more big builds like this and, and just be a part of this, this journey. And I think overall, uh, just gaining new friends and meeting all the cool people that are involved in the show. The most positive thing I took from this session, uh, being able to collaborate with others, uh, seeing them work outside of their comfort zones and pushing the limits of their experience was, uh, was great to see.
it was awesome meeting new people, like learning some of the new techniques and just getting out of the box that I've been in doing a lot of production work. Even producing the piece I had to produce for the audition was pretty awesome. I'd like to do more pieces like that. Learning new things that are useful to me, I totally appreciate and just getting out of my box, basically. Just in general, it was a great experience for me, learning things, meeting new people, and I'm really excited about it. big positive things that I took was watching Jonathan and Joseph during the final build, keeping their composure when things happen or changes needed to be made, not getting frustrated and losing sight of the goal. It was definitely an inspiring thing. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to try to push myself on my own assemblies and not be daunted by things of that size that I can't comfortably hold. Work big and go with confidence. Lesson four, resources. Look online for artists and studios like Sweet Tooth Glassworks in Eugene, Oregon, offering lessons, classes, and studio rentals by the day, week, or month. YouTube has a vast library of demos and lessons from artists all over the world. Books like Contemporary Lampworking have great fundamental information. Facebook groups like Learn to Blow Glass and Torch Talk are great online communities with lots of artists and collectors alike. Rub shoulders with working artists by attending Flame Offs like the Michigan Glass Project or Pipe Classic. Learn to Blow Glass and Team Headhunters would like to thank our sponsors. Herbal Equipment and Distribution in Altoona, PA. Mountain Glass Arts in Eugene, Oregon and Asheville, North Carolina. Dabex Premium E-Rigs. Sweet Tooth Glassworks in Eugene, Oregon. Top Crop Dispensaries in Oregon and New Mexico. HippieHustle.com 